Queen of Spades, King of Hearts, King of Spades, and unknown power for this one. Okay, so these are the guest rooms. So we're in the guest rooms now. Oh. Crap. Um. So she's going to... I'm going to reset the... Reset the clock. I bet... Uh, I bet we can actually... Uh, there's the hungry charm. Mm -hmm. Huh. We might actually need the hungry charm to get back in that room. Come to think of it. We I'm would. Gonna, uh, I'm going to set the clock here. I bet we need to... Um, I bet we need to do the juju charm to to go into the the fish room. Mm-hmm. To what end? Uh, there's a couple of things I wanted to mess around with in there. Because remember, this is one of the places that we didn't explore. Plus, we have like a weird side thing that we can do. <laughs> you wouldn't want to talk with the fish, would you? I was going to talk with the fish. Really? Super charm. Nosey oh, the gross. ghost? Yep, the, gr the ghost said something the about The ghost it. was the reason why the charm wasn't... With Willow. Okay. So now we run back. Unfortunately, it's been a while, so I kind of forget well, how the, the exact the process works. Yeah, there's the big fish. Aha! Oh, a couple of things. Mm-hmm. Master Aquarium. Realizing that aquariums were an excellent way both to please his wife and show off to his guests, the Marquis wanted to collect only the rarest of fish. The Devil's Hole Pupfish is a tiny breed of fish existing solely in one muddy hole in one particular desert. Once every hundred years, a bizarre mutation will manifest, and the one, one will grow to an enormous size and display extraordinary coloring. These are known as the Devil's Monarchs. Okay, or Ganondorf. Every hundred years, you know, there's a mutation. Yep. What am I saying? No, I'm kidding. In any case, Lucas obtained a government license to own and preserve one of these, much to his wife's delight. However, this is still not quite the rarest or most unusual creature kept in the mansion. Da, 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 da. Yeah, so the uh, the pupfish are uh, from... Uh... The, the pup fisher from Death Valley. Uh -huh. Did you... I probably told you about the story about the two drunk assholes that decided to... Uh, Knock over a rock? No, no, they like went swimming in it and like killed a bunch of them and stuff like Wait, that. Wait, they killed a bunch of pup fish? Yeah, in, the, in Devil's Hole. And I think oh, no. both of them have like nearly lifelong prison sen sentences and like other issues and stuff. Grinma, Deep Demon. Ooh. Old as stones, Grimmaw is the true form hiding behind the tiny juju guppy that the Marquis brought for his wife as a gift, completely unaware that the legends were real. One of the true voodoo demons of the deep, Grinmaw re resembles a gigantic anglerfish with the tiny colorful guppy as the lure at the end of his tether. Only those with a second sight can see Grinmaw's true form, but he delights in whispering madness to any who will listen. Willow knew what really was in the tank in the secret chamber. Created a special candles that reveal him for a confrontation, but once amassed, he proved to be more powerful than she could have imagined. Okay. So if we do this, this is the painting room. And we really want to confront this guy. Oh, those are paintings of Grinmaw. Well, the one just looks very toothy and demonic, but. They're not pictures of Grimma. I don't know. It's an interesting question. You can't light it? Okay, no, there you can. go. I remember just weird collisions. Hey, oh, Grimma. Well, now, Lafcadio Boone, I have something for you. Pass this on to your old friend, won't you? We're not so different, he and I. Not so different at all. I'll be waiting for you, laugh, cardio. <laughs> I'm done with y'all now. Keep moving. Wait, did he give you a... a card or something? I don't know what he did. Go, up, go upstairs. I think he did leave something for oh, you. Oh yeah, there is a card. 
An, an invitation. invitation. Whose invitation's this? Willow's. Willow's. Blue. The Marquis knew there was something special about Willow when he first met her in a curiosity shop deep in the swamps. His instincts were correct, though she never speaks of it. Willow Blue is the closest that the old families oh that the old families have to royalty. There's a drop of ancient magic in her veins, giving her strange dark gifts that allow her to see what others cannot. The Marquis struck a deal with Willow, engaging her services to seek out unusual artifacts to display in the mansion. But she has deep concerns over one of the more exotic gifts the Marquis has found for his wife. Well, we already knew that. Uh-oh. Ah, it's her! You can't leave! And it's so close to the door, you, you just have to wait out this scene. I wonder what happens if you foil it. Beast. Liar. I know what you are. I wonder if she has a reaction to the candle already being lit. Show your face. Nope. No. Hello, Blue. So you see me now. How delicious. It's you who's been calling to tequila in the night. <laughs> I remember whispering sweetly to her something or other. Swamp blood runs in these veins. <laughs> I should have known. You are powerful. What a drop of voodoo blood against the darkness of this place. The darkness, but it's you. You are the poison. You will nothing. And you you don't even have the sight girl without these candles. You can't even begin to reach my world. But I do like these candles. I can use these candles. No, no. Oh, and she's going to tell you, no, you can't do this. Huh. Interesting that she'll stop us, but that's okay. It was the just... king in the red gave you that ring. There's a secret place outside the mansion. Okay, I'm aware. That is where you need to go. Please, there's something you need to see. Okay, so we do know. We do know. Yep. I just wanted to watch that. So yeah, Grimjaw, Grimjaw had no uh, has nothing to do with this, necessarily. Uh, but yeah, we got an inv invitation for that, which is something that... Uh, I guess we could have actually gotten that earlier, now that I'm thinking about it. Alright, um... Well, still got the key. it seemed to be one of the things that they were connected to, so who connected the other uh, visitors to their rooms? Like, is there something specifically for tequila? Oh, whoa! You never got here through here before? Mansion gardens stretch out into the distance. Nope. The four we of hearts. We want to get the four of hearts. Something we had not been capable of getting earlier. Ah, run around, run around, run around, run around. Ah. Not too worried. Nearly got you. No, there's like a meter. I've got plenty of time. It may not look like it. And they're like, go ahead. But I I had more than enough time somehow. Ugh. Getting through these doors is harder than it looks. Okay. Oh, hey. Break it open. Okay. So now we've got... Ace of, Ace of Spades. Spades. Ernest has been smashed into pieces. There's something lying amongst the pieces. Okay, Ace of Spades. Um, no memories either. We go brochure. Well, we don't know about that yet. Okay, so we don't need tutorials. Honestly, we should probably actually solve this. Like once you mean we finish. Go outside. Yeah. So we already did guest rooms. These need cards. Music rooms. Oh yeah, the instrument pool room. The Marquis liked to say he blew so hard at playing most instruments, he almost literally sucked. However, he was an excellent pianist and general audiophile. When Eleanor sang, the Marquis would frequently accompany her and playing together was one of their most cherished pastimes. The instrument pool is a shallow ornamental pond surrounded by stone replicas of instruments played by some of the couple's favorite artists. And in the cabinets are instruments owned by famous musicians from history. Every one of them is maintained and kept fully tuned. Any guest at the mansion who is happy to play for an audience is welcome to perform with any instrument they please. Wow, that's awfully gracious. 
Well, not gracious. Awfully generous. Well... I can't imagine spending who knows how much on an, an instrument from, like, a historical figure and then letting anyone play it. You know? Okay, so music rooms. Dressing room. The dressing room was created to allow tequila and any other performance performers a private space where they could prepare for any shows, of which there are always many at the Sexy Brutal in any given evening. The area was originally another room for displaying instruments and other items from musical history, but these were all hastily stored and locked away in an adjacent storage room. A laundry chute allows for changes of clothing to be quickly processed by staff, but in later years the room below was converted into an exotic butterfly house, and so the chute fell out of use entirely. It may, however, still be connected. Not that anyone would put anything down it, of course. My grandma's house has a laundry chute, and I found it was very fun as a child. What, you'd go down it? No, 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 no! Good. Like, if, if a sibling or someone was in the basement, because they had their pool table and books and other things in the basement. If, like, it was dinner time and you wanted to call them up without having to walk around the stairs to the basement, you would just go, hey! And, you know, there would be an eerie voice coming from the laundry room. <laughs> and it would sort of have a metallic echo because of the shoot itself. Also, I'm pretty sure in Home Alone, um, Macaulay Culkin's character, Kevin, uses the shoot to, what, send an iron? on top of one of the guys or something? I don't know. Okay, we got another one. Tequila stage. The stage within the music room wing of the mansion features one of several delicate stained glass murals commissioned by the Marquis, designed by the architect genius Thanos Gorecki, and created by master goldsmith Orm Runes. The Marquis created this stage room primarily as a gift to the singer Tequila Bell, who is regarded as a living national treasure due to her extraordinarily voice and extraordinary voice talent. Whenever Tequila visits the mansion, she has the room entirely at her disposal. She is often accompanied on the piano by Red Rockridge, ex-head croupier for the Sexy Brutale, and an unusually gifted pianist. So... So Red is actually pretty good at playing. Yeah. Oh, the guy with the horns on his mask. Okay. I think we've got one room left. And here. We should probably get further in the game before we get to everything. Yeah. I we just oh. wanted to come back here. Because it was I don't know. Stuff we had missed. Band room. The band room was another practice room for any of the guests or entertainers at the mansion to make it free use of. It was actually most popular with several members of staff who had their own full house club band that would frequently play during the mass balls every year. It was a little known secret that many of the members of the house staff were musicians who actually came to serve at the Sexy Brutal for the sole reason of gaining access to the treasure trove of instruments that the Marquis had accumulated. More valuable even than the instruments, however, is the opportunity to talk and learn from the extraordinary caliber of musicians who visit the mansion. Mm -hmm. And there's a card. Yeah, some of these car cards weren't here before. No, I remember that one. I remember saying, that there was like one or two that we missed and we never got back to the room again, so. Whoa. Okay, her mask was about to turn around and attack you. Not fast enough. Secret chamber. Uh, oh. Oh! The secret chamber is home to the Marquis' darkest well secrets. Knowing his wife loved to miss the sea, he obtained the rarest fish of all, Jujugapi, from the deepest swamps of the Caribbean. These tiny, brightly colored creatures were believed to house the soul of an ancient demon. Owning such a fish is entirely illegal, but for his wife, the Marquis was willing to break any rule. He created a beautiful, lush chamber at the heart of his mansion for his wife. F could, uh, so his wife could sit and watch the tiny guppy. Eleanor confessed that spending time in the chamber with the guppy made her feel greatly uneasy. She said it would whisper to her, and she would be overcome with sadness. Uh, there's a card under the piano, yellow circle right? Nope, that was a key for the storage closet. Okay, well, um... That's probably enough exploring for a little while. Let's rescue the last guy. Uh, that might give us full run to the mansion and let us teleport around. Okay. Not to mention, uh, we do want to get most of this done sooner than later. Right, because I'll be leaving tomorrow. And that'd be bad. Okay. 
At this point, I think I'm gonna have to sew more at my parents' house because... No time. <sighs> Sorry. All right. And you might want to skip to four. Or did you? Why? It's also past four. Oh, okay. I meant so that you wouldn't have anyone in the room because no. they start there. It's already kind of in the evening, so it doesn't matter too much. Okay, there we go. So there's there's uh, the marquee. The one guy. Presumably that's the marquee. Uh, um, yeah, we don't know. Because if the marquee has been locked up. There's two people. There's the guy downstairs. And then there's the guy that crashed out of the top of the tower. Oh, hey. There's memory. Oh. For sure. The gardens. The Marquis was an indifferent gardener, but Eleanor loved the mansion grounds, and under her care they flourished. The fountain and its statues, uh, wait, the fountain and its statues was carved, mm, I would say were, carved from a single block of marble, imported at phenomenal expense, and worked on day and night by Trinity for almost a full year. The full extent of the mansion grounds extends far beyond what can be seen from the terrace. All right, and here we have the house. Interesting that it's got something on it. Like, on the door, I know. Marked with a teardrop, it will not open. That's uh, weird, we've already gone through. We've been in here, what? The signet ring, Wah! It's just weird that we've been in this room before. And it wasn't locked before. Oh, sweet Jesus. What in, what is happening? We can't time travel anymore? I don't know, we might be able to, we probably can, but some this is new. He uh, can't go anywhere in this room. Find your way to the basement. Okay. You're gonna die. I guess we go this way? You can't through the fire, though. If only we were here, here earlier. So the fire... Yep. So the fire gets worse. Okay. How did this fire start? You know, I have a lot of questions. Yeah, it looks like you have to go to the main room. How does this- how did this fire start is not necessarily one of them. Do we have to go out for Eleanor? Yeah. Okay, I thought we were gonna have to run through the whole place. Okay... This is new. What's new? The lagging? Or... The fire? Well, the fire, yes. I just didn't expect it, and it, I really hope that it doesn't prevent you from finding the other cards, because it looks like it might. No, no, there's plenty of more exp There's plenty more exploration that we get to do later. Are you sure? The house is on fire. I think it's all magic nonsense. Lafcadio. It's been such a long time. Would you talk to Lucas? Something seems to be troubling him. He's always looked up to you, you know? I know he teases you dreadfully about your lifestyle. But he respects you enormously. More than anyone else I know. I believe he's always wanted to be more like you. Perhaps when he's a little older. Or more mature, I should say. Oh, you have our ring. Can I see? I 
remember you presenting it to us when you married us. You must take it. Lucas will be missing it, I'm sure. Tell him I just needed a rest. <laughs> this little guy is heavy. I hope he won't be mad that I'm missing the party. I know he loves the mansion, but this is all we've ever really needed. This right here, this is our perfect little world. Please, tell him that I will wait for him, won't you? I'll be right here whenever he is ready. And there's a mask in the corner. That was Eleanor, the Marquis's wife. She is always here, safe in this place. You've seen some of the truth now. The mansion was on fire. We, the guests, died. It should have ended there. But that creature in the golden mask, somehow he brought them all back torturing us over and over. I try to help them, try to find some peace in all this pain. He is so, so strong. But with that ring, I believe you can stop him. There is a secret place. My un- I mean, sixpence was so close. Take that ring to the room where Aurum died. I will unlock the path. Eleanor left her mask for you. Take it. So Sixpence is her uncle? Mm-hmm. Eleanor's mirror walk. Eleanor was the life and soul that connected the people and places in the Sexy Brutal. Her mask allows you to travel by stepping into mirrors placed throughout the mansion. You can now walk through any mirror in the Sexy Brutal. The movements of all staff and guests have also been revealed to you on the map. She always tried so hard to see the best in people. But it's what you see that will matter. Now look into the mirror. Oh, you're young again. Maybe you would age all this time? Don't know. You're just, your hair just seemed to turn I think it was brown. just chrome and oh. reflecting the room. Oh. Okay, yeah, it's white again. I have never seen inside that place, you know. I'm not sure whether to rage impotently or just be quietly glad. Anyway, I've watched you laugh, Cardio. Your arrival was somewhat unexpected. All these years, you've done your dutiful loop, dying along with sixpence in the chapel. Then all of a sudden, one day, you're running around, ruining everything. It took me a while to figure it out. And then, of course, I knew that bloodied creature had to be involved. I'm sure she has spun all the tales about me and what's happening here. I'm sure they have left out some rather important information. I will be utterly candid with you now, Boone. I could end this right now. I could end you. I have the power. Perhaps she is right, and I am a monster. But we might all be monsters here. I want you to see, to understand. Come with me. Uh, 
Now the first question is, am I really a murderer? And to that, the answer is, most assuredly, yes. You see this man here, dear Reginald? I killed him, stone dead. It wasn't my figure that pulled the trigger, but it was my command. Family as well, you know. What's that in front of him? Is it the instant that the bullet hits so it's just blood? Sixpence is frozen perfectly in time. His face shows disbelief and agony. Yeah, that's the blood. The staff member looks grimly dispassionate. He's doing his job without malice or pleasure. Ah, uh, the heart of the casino, our dear friend Clay. In this scenario, I had him die from a shot of venom from the same spider which would go on to devour his precious wife. He did like a drink, Clay, but never when he was working, you know? These rooms weren't next to one another. It's just sort of condensed. He's warping us all over. So fitting. She was so beautiful, Trinity. The Moth by Moonlight. It's what Clay called her. She loved that name. A moth. So I thought it was very fitting for her to be eaten by my giant spider. I never had one, you know. I'm sure nothing could possibly grow that big. But by gods, I wish they did. I would have kept it in a room just like this one. This one was rather fantastical. When we found that fish, I did so want to believe the stories of voodoo fish. I rather suspect it was just a guppy with some particularly bright colors. The man who sold it to me must have been must have thought I was the most gullible person under the sun. Is this the marquee? Could be. Because he's talking about how he accepted the fish or bought the fish. I don't know. But I wasn't paying for the fish. I was paying for the story. Eleanor called me a fool, but she did love to watch him in his tank. Best fortune I ever spent. I'd like to say that Willow would never have hung herself, but then a long time ago I stopped even trying to pretend I could understand what another person might do. See, he seems to have knowledge of everyone, like he knew them personally. And he talks about Eleanor. Miss Tequila Bell. What a voice. She was a living work of art. I murdered her with the notes of a song, and then had my staff throw her body down a garbage chute. Grayson Red. It really wasn't a party until those two got here. Grayson really is such a complete scoundrel, but god he's fun. Or he was, at least. Red really would have done anything for him. I'm almost certain that it would be so much more painful if Grayson had gone second, and Red had to watch him die first. Yes, perhaps I'll change this one. I guess we can look at these, though it probably mm. doesn't matter. What kind of maniac imagines torturing a man this way? He gave his own life trying to save G Grayson. Mm -hmm. So this is just an overview of everything in a way. Ah, uh, Orem. I smelted him down in a furnace a big gold bar. My mansion had many strange and wonderful creations, but a lift that doubled as an incinerator. That would have been something. 
I like to think that if Orem weren't were able to choose how he went, then perhaps he would have chosen something like this. Though in a way, he almost did. Just the bodies. It was a small hope that his heart gave out before he burned to death. Fire blast from the furnace. Interesting that Thanos wasn't in this. Well, he didn't even mention Thanos. Oh, here we are. Oh, this there. is Thanos. Thanos, what a mind to waste. It wasn't just his, this mansion that he built, you know. There are similar works of architectural genius all over the country. He was a grouchy and often tiresome old man, but that mine was like a cracked diamond. This is works we'll live on. Well, Boone, you have heard my confession. As I said, I am a murderer. This is not a brag or a boast. I am not good or clever for it. I am sinful and gross. I have killed everyone in this mansion, but there is one person who didn't die. One man who survived the events of that day here. Who woke up in a broken body with a broken mind. They put a mask on his face and a machine forced him to breathe until he was fit to stand. If what the man in the gold mask says is true, then the mask is a breathing aid. Who are the staff here? man who served his time, but time that could never be enough. Whoever was in the cell, they must have been here for years upon years for a tree to grow this large. A man who lived when all the others did not. I would like you to meet that man, Boone. I would like you to meet him and to decide if this day should end. Is it you? The crypt is marked Lucas. It's empty. The crypt is marked Eleanor. You know somehow that the grave is real. She is here. Pocket Watch has stopped and is unresponsive. Oh yeah, this room. Mm -hmm. The answer will be behind these doors. Come and find me there. She and I will be waiting for you.